I'm here with Nancy Dreyfus, psychotherapist and couples therapist with nearly 30 years experience working with, with couples in her private practice and in workshops. She's here today to talk about her new book, Talk to Me Like I'm Someone You Love. Nancy, of all the many, many, many relationship books out there that are intended to help couples resolve conflicts, your book has such a un unique approach. Can you, can you describe the method that you put forth in this book? Talk to me like I'm someone you love is a way to get couples who might be fighting, bickering forever, even in a complete stalemate and not talking to each other, calm down and get through to each other in a loving way in a really short period of time. It's not a typical self-help book. It's actually do-it-yourself psychotherapy, Sarah, right in the midst of a conflict. Um, you, know, you know how it is. The wife might be thinking, he is such a baby, and the husband is thinking, she is so critical. Right in that moment, one of them gets the book, holds up a page to each other that might say something like, this feels awful. Can we start again and really listen to each other? or I know I'm overreacting, can you give me a minute to get sane again, or a very popular one, I love you, I hate fighting, and can't we please hug? And what happens with these written messages in a moment, someone who has just seemed impossible is starting to turn into a very dear friend. Absolutely, these are the things we all want to hear but are so hard to think of in the moment. And uh, in the book you talk uh, a lot about, you call the cards, um, Flashcards for real life. Mm -hmm. I love that. What, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, there's a little bit of wry humor to it. Um, and we all know that fighting is a part of real life. There's tension, there's getting under each other's skin, and there's a point that couples get to where it feels that whatever they say, they're just going to make things worse. And part of that is because we're already having a conversation in our head that we know what our partner is like. Everything's going to be an argument. He's not going to trust me. This is where a written message can bypass all of those defenses. A few months ago, a client said a funny thing. The flashcards lack attitude. They don't have attitude. And I say they don't have voice tone. You know, you can be feeling apologetic or you can be feeling conciliatory. But if there is any exasperation or annoyance in your voice tone, believe me, your partner is going to hear that, not the words. So that, you know, you could be feeling somewhat apologetic, but if it comes out, okay, I'm sorry, or, or right already, what can I say that would make you feel understood? It's, it's not going to create a warm, fuzzy moment. You are so right about tone. It's, it's amazing how mm -hmm. you can just, the slightest note can, can ruin a, a, an otherwise, you know, wonderful apology. It's just, it's all there. It's the tone. Um, I know this well. Um, I, I kept, uh, you know, it's such an original method and at first when I heard I was skeptical, you know, how could this work? How did you hit upon this? Where, where did you come up with this idea? Well, we could say that I stumbled upon it. A number of years ago, I was in a couple session with a couple that actually reminded me of my own parents. The wife was just screaming at the husband, as I had heard my mother do many, many times. And she particularly used a word my mother would use with my father. She kept calling him asinine. Oh. And I went into kind of a trance. I was no longer a competent therapist. I was an 11-year-old failing to get her part parents to like each other. And I didn't really know what to do. Um, so more as a desperate act than a conscious therapeutic intervention, I took an envelope that was lying on a desk, and on it I just scribbled, talk to me like I'm someone you love, and I gave it to the mute husband, and I said, hold it up to her. And he was a little dazed, and he saw what the message was, and he held it up to her, and I watched something amazing. The wife saw the self-respect in the message, and it brought out the best in her. She sort of calmed down, and she said, I guess I haven't been very loving, and he's just sort of smiled, and the two of them smiled at each other. And I saw people who had been enemies for years really start liking each other. It was, it was really beautiful, and it was really amazing. It's so true. I think sometimes our words are our own worst enemies, and I think this book is really testament to that. Uh, you know, reading, reading this book, I, I felt like you were sometimes channeling my living room or my kitchen <laughs> where some of uh, the conflicts in my own marriage go on. Um, you know, and, and 
pretty much every single statement I felt you know could have been useful for me or I would have wanted to use it or I would have wanted to hear it from my husband I mean how ca how is this possible how can these statements sort of be one size fit all I mean well it's a great question Sarah in case you haven't noticed most couples have the same argument over and over again and what they don't know is also it's a similar argument to their neighbors and if truth be known it's the similar argument to their psychotherapists and you know, the content of arguments could be different, though I would have to say a very popular one this, di this year is you'd have sex with your iPhone if you could. And, you know, couples are saying, you know, you give attention to your online bridge partner. The kids are more important to you than I am. Work is more important to you than I am. Um, but you know what? If you get rid of the content underneath it all, Couples are basically arguing about wanting to be seen, wanting to be heard, wanting a little space for themselves, and wanting to be taken seriously. It's the fact that the flashcards have only to do with the relationship that makes them so powerful. So the flashcards don't address anything that you're arguing about, but they address everything that you care about, which is why they can feel so magical, because they're dealing with the real issue, which is how the two of you are treating each other.